Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over the multiple ways to configure Autogen. What if you want to use multiple models? What if you have multiple local models that you want to integrate together? Or maybe you just want to use ChatGPT, but maybe different versions of it. Well, today I'm going to go over four different ways to set up your Autogen configuration. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing to know is that Autogen has pre-built in functions for all this configuration, right? We don't really have to do anything difficult. We just have to kind of set some variables. It's pretty much all we have to do. But Autogen has more than one, has several pre-built in functions to define the configuration for the models. All right, so I'm going to start with the easiest one and it's called get config list, all right? So if you import Autogen, you create a new file, import Autogen, and you were to call autogen.get underscore config underscore list. This is a function that takes in four parameters, API keys, bases, type, and version. The only one you actually need really for any of the configuration for the models, the only one you really, you have to have is the API key. The other ones get the uh, defaulted to none if you don't define them, but they do have to be defined in the same Python file. All right, I'm not really keen on that. I like to separate things out, but for this example, if you want to do it, if it's just a simple um, like AI agency that you're going to create, you're more than welcome to do this. It doesn't matter. It'll have the same effect no matter how you configure it. What you would do here is just define the variables, API keys, bases, type, and version. Because I have them as the same name, I don't have to say here API keys un equals API underscore keys. Okay. Because they're the, they're the same name. So we don't need to do that. I just give the function for the config list keys. The API keys, bases, type, and version. All right. And then I just simply print this out and I'm going to do this for all of them so that you can see um, exactly what it's reading. So whenever we print this out, as you can see here, we have the API key, the, the base URL, uh, the API type, and the API version. And that's it. Now let's move on to the next one. All right. So for the second way, this is called config list open AI underscore A O A I. That is not easy to say a couple times fast, but the, but it stands for Azure open AI. And this allows you to, uh, an easy way to connect either open AI or Azure's open AI or both, whatever you need. And then what this has is five parameters it has a key file path. And then basically uh, all the API keys and bases that you need. So the first thing is the key file path. It's just by default a period. And what that means is this Python file, that's located over here in this directory. If I need to start looking for, if I need to start looking for something, we're going to start here and then go down in the directory. Okay. And what we can do with this type of configuration is have specific text files with the information we need. What you can see here is I have an open AI API key file perimeter and it takes in a text file. So I go to the directory txt, which is right here which is in the same directory as this Python file. And then I go to the key underscore open AI text. And what I have here is just the key that I would need to connect to open AI. I don't have to have a key value pair here. I just simply give it the value. All right. So it can be SK dash one to whatever number, whatever it is. Okay. You can just put that here. We do the same thing for Azure's open AI key and the base. I have two separate values for these. This is the base URL, and this is the key for uh, Azure's open AI. And then the fifth and last parameter exclude, I can either put open AI here or AOAI. So I want to exclude for the, whichever model is going to be using this configuration, I can exclude one of the two um, open AIs. If we print this out, we're going to get all the information. So we have the, uh, the default API key here. Uh, the Azure's uh, API key, the API base for Azure. And you can also see, I didn't do this, right? I didn't give it the API type and the API version. I didn't do that, but Autogen does that by default. So if we go into this function, into the config list function here, and we scroll down a little bit, what you can see here is for the Azure OpenAI config, by default, it sets the API type to Azure and the API version to uh, what, July 1st preview. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. And now if I were to type in AOAI in the exclude, all it gives me is the API key for OpenAI. Okay, and that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. And for the third one, this is called config list from .env, which basically means that we want to get the API keys from a .env file. So in this function from Autogen, we take in three things. We need the dot env file path, which is just the dot env file that I'm about to show you. 
has something new called a model API key map and then a filtered dictionary. Let's go through that one by one. Well, the .env file path, so we take in the .env file, which I created right here. So I have two different keys here, one for OpenAI and then some other random API key that we can use, okay? That's all, that's all it's here, that's all we need. And then for the model API key map, this is a little different. What this is saying is this, this is a JSON structure and you can have a list of these. So the first model I, I say I wanna maybe use is GPT-4 and I wanted to look for the, the key, OpenAI API underscore key in the .env file. So it's gonna look for OpenAI API key here and then retrieve the value from it. So we really could like name these really whatever you want, whatever makes sense for you. And this can retrieve the value from that. All right, and then let's say we have another model, 3.5 turbo. Uh, we can give it the API key ENV variable. So it's called another API key. So in the .env file, right here it is. So it's gonna retrieve the SK another API key to use for this model. And what I'm doing here is I'm defining a lot of things. So in GPT-4, I only care about the API key, but for the 3.5 model, maybe I want to do something else with it. So I have a API key I want to use. Maybe I want to use a different API type. If not, I just use OpenAI. Maybe I want to use a different version of it. And maybe the base, maybe I'm connecting to a remote server that has a local LLM that I want to uh, use for the model. So I can just go ahead and define all of that here. And then we have the filtered dictionary. And what this is saying, and all this is saying, is that look for a model with GPT-4 in it. So up here in the model API key map, it's gonna go through the list of models here and look for the one that matches GPT-4. If it finds it, then that's the one it's gonna use. Let's go ahead and print out this config list so you can see what it does. As you can see here, whenever we print out the config list, because I had it filter for GPT-4, it's only gonna return the API key and the model for GPT-4. So the API key is sk-openai, and in the model API key map, I asked it to look for the, for the model GPT-4 to use the key in the .env called OpenAI API key. And it did right here and returned sk-openai-11111. All right, and we're using that API key now. Now, if I change this to be 3.5-turbo and we go ahead and print this out, it should give us all the information that we have above. And it does. So we have the API key, a different one. We have the API base above, the type, and the version. Okay, and of course it gives us which model it's associated to. And then what this allows us to do is for this configuration list, we can send this to um, some AI agent to use these specific parameters for its model. Now I have to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of this version because you have a lot of information dumped into the Python file. And then if you just wanna use one of them, then you know why even have a list of model API key maps? Why have a list of models in there? And whenever you only want to use one of them anyways, right? The, maybe I'm just not thinking of it properly, but this isn't something that I would particularly use often. If you just have a singular model with information that you want to use, I mean, this is fine, right? I'm not knocking this way, but it's just me personally. I like to separate everything out. So in the next version of the last one that I'm going to show you, we can separate everything out. So let's jump to that one. Okay, and for our last way to configure, and here I'm gonna show you how to create a couple different AI agents using different models and the models information such as the API keys, okay? So the first thing I wanna show you is the function, the built-in function for Autogen for this one is called config list from JSON. Basically it means we're gonna create a separate JSON file and we're gonna get all the configuration that we need. All right, so this takes in three parameters uh, env or file parameter, which is basically the name of the file that we want to retrieve the information from. And again, we have a filtered dictionary, and I think this way is a little bit more useful. So the first thing is we need to create uh, the file that has the information. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a file called OAI for OpenAI underscore config underscore list. And you can either name it this way, it's just justify without any extension, or you can give it the .json extension. I mean, that, that, way is, that way is probably a little bit better because 
uh, whenever the syntax highlighting for creating JSON will help you out. But either way, it doesn't matter. And what we do here is we can give an array of JSON, uh, JSON objects. And each JSON object can have a model, API key, API base, an API version, or or maybe just API key, okay? But you just, you need to at least have the API key. But what this allows us to do is we can define all of the models with all the information, you know, like the keys and bases that we wanna use for that model, okay? We can list all of them here into one spot separate from the Python file. And that's what I like to do. So this is the one that I would prefer and maybe one that you could start using, but you don't have to, whatever your choice is, right? That's why there's, that's why there's choices, right? Because uh, to each their own. Now let's go back to the Python file and I can kind of show you uh, kind of the power of doing it this way. I'm gonna create two different configuration lists. So I have one called cheap config list and one called costly config list. All right, so they each take in an ENV or file parameter. I'm just giving it the name of the config list file that we created. And now for the filter dictionary, okay, this is where this is where this is a little bit more powerful. So what I wanted to do is inside this, inside this uh, config list file that we just showed you, that I just showed you, I want to use the model GPT 3.5 turbo. And I want this cheap config list to use all of that model's information. And then down here, we have a costly config list. And it again, takes the same ENV or file parameter. So the same config list file that we created, but this one, I want it to filter for the model GPT-4. And I want this config list to use all of that model's information. And what this allows me to do is I can create two different auto gen agents now. So I have assistant one and assistant two. So assistant one is auto gen dot assistant agent. Okay. We've done this before. This is just a normal uh, AI agent. We give it a name and then the LLM config, which we've done before. We just have a timeout, um, a seed, and here, the config list, all right? You have to define the config list. This one, I want to be the cheap config list, all right? And then when I create assistant two, which is just another uh, assistant agent, has a different name, the config list here, I want it to be costly config list, okay? So if I want to create another user agent, I can have it initiate, a, create a group chat with these, and whenever I initiate the chat, the 3.5 assistant will use GPT 3.5 turbo and the assistant two will use GPT four. So I could have maybe 3.5 turbo. I can give it like generic questions. And when it gives me a response back, maybe I could have the GPT four assistant. I could have it kind of maybe summarize it or filter it or do something else with it that I maybe need to be a little more, any more precision on. And also, this is powerful because what if you have multiple local models? Well, you can create multiple configurations for different local models. Maybe you have several URLs with different models running. Well, you can initiate the chat with, you can create another group chat, initiate the chat from a user agent. And whenever you do that, each model will use that separate config list to talk to each other. Okay. And I think that's where this is this configuration is really powerful. And if you weren't sure actually how to use different models in an auto or AI agency, this is how you would do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and print out the cheap config list. And as you can see, uh, it's using the 3.5 turbo model, getting the 3.5 API key, a version, and then the URL base that I wanna use for this model, okay? Now, if I go ahead, go ahead and change this to be the, whoops, the costly, the costly config list, we run this now, and it's going to give us all the GPT-4 information. So GPT-4, the GPT-4 API key, and the base. We didn't have a version with this. So again, you can customize this model to have some of the information that you need, and you can do that for each model. All right. Thank you for staying till the end, and I appreciate you watching this. I hope this helped you learn how to use different configurations. Maybe choose one that suits your need, but the one that I showed you where you can use different models. And I think that's really powerful because if you can start using multiple local LLMs, or if you even have, you know, servers running the cloud with specific LLMs, then you can have different uh, URLs connecting to them and have them in a group chat talking to each other for specific purposes.
And I hope this helped open your eyes to more ideas on how to integrate everything together with Autogen, which I think is very powerful. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I appreciate it and I will see you next time. Have a great day.